A chirped RF pulse addresses the frequencies in our sample sequentially in frequency space. By applying a gradient to our sample and assigning a different frequency to each position in our sample, we can excite it sequentially in real space, that is, along the z-axis. This is illustrated in the following animation. Note that, since the spins are excited one after the other, each spin spins a different amount of time in the xy plane. Let's compute the phase accumulated by such a spin. The phase is equal to the Larmor frequency of the spin, as determined by its chemical shift and position along the sample, and the time it spins in the xy plane, which is linear in z. Simplifying, we get a result which is close to the one we want, but not quite there. It's comprised of two contributions, a gradient-induced quadratic phase in Z and a chemical shift term. If we could just find a way of canceling out the gradient term and remain with the chemical shift term, we could have our black box. The phase's current form suggests a solution. Since the chemical shift term is independent of the gradient, it seems that if we would repeat the pulse again, this time with the gradient reversed, we might cancel out the gradient-induced term. This is indeed what needs to be done. The full excitation sequence can be viewed on the left. The chirped excitation pulse in A is followed by a chirped storage pulse in B, which reverses the gradient effects of the first chirp. In the absence of a chemical shift, the spins will return to their original position along the z-axis, as if nothing has happened. However, in the presence of a chemical shift, the stored magnetization along the z-axis will become modulated by the chemical shift. Let us view this in action. First, let's look at what happens to a sample without any inherent chemical shift. As previously stated, the spins return to the z-axis as if nothing has happened. However, when we give them a non-zero chemical shift and observe, the stored magnetization becomes modulated by the chemical shift. This might be a bit difficult to see in this animation, due to the fact that not all magnetization has been stored. Some of it has been left in the xy plane. This is precisely what the next part of the pulse sequence, part C, is about. By using a strong enough gradient, we can purge the xy magnetization, 
that is, deface it and make sure it doesn't contribute anything to the acquired signal. Any method of doing so is fine. In this sequence, we've used a strong X gradient, but you could equally use a strong Z gradient if you lack the appropriate hardware. Now, all we need to do is excite the spins to the XY plane using a simple 90 hard pulse. Following the hard pulse, the XY magnetization is proportional to the sine of Z and omega naught. By basic complex algebra, this is equal to the sum of two exponents, both having precisely the phase distribution we are after. We can work with either one. For example, acquiring with a positive gradient at this point will refocus one of them while leaving the other unfocused, defaced, and therefore undetected during our acquisition. We conclude this presentation by presenting some results obtained using ultrafast NMR. Here we can see an N15 ubiquity in spectra at 2.3 millimolar concentration. This 2D HMQC spectrum was acquired during 60 milliseconds using a cryoprobe on an 800 MHz spectrometer. Here we see a similar 2D spectrum, this time the result of an HSQC sequence carried out on a C13 protein A in a 1 millimolar concentration. The total acquisition time was 50 milliseconds and the spectrum was obtained using a cryoprobe on an 800 MHz machine. In this transparency, ultrafast NMR was used in conjunction with regular T2 incrementation to reconstruct a 3D HNCO spectrum of C13 N15 ubiquitin on a standard 500 MHz variant magnet at room temperature. The entire 3D sequence took just two minutes. Here we've used ultrafast NMR to track in real time the evolution of peaks due to hydrogen deuterium exchange in N15 ubiquitin on a standard variant 500 MHz magnet at room temperature. A 2D spectrum was acquired every 2.4 seconds. Those of you who are interested in browsing the extensive literature published on the subject are welcome to visit the Friedman Group's homepage at www.weizmann.ac.il slash kempfiz slash friedman underscore group slash home dot html. I hope this presentation has helped elucidate the basic principles of ultrafast NMR spectroscopy. Thank you for your attention.